One question that I see consistently popping up in the comment sections for my uploads has to do with recommendations for builds. And since the manhunt seasonal and league format is here to stay, players of all experience levels want a build that is easy to maintain and will absolutely rip through timed league missions. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to the channel. Quick question, who wants to melt in the Division 2 and not have to be in super try-hard mode to do so? I mean, who doesn't, right? All red DPS bullet builds are still really popular. Skill builds with turrets and assault drones are as well. But status effect builds are just as powerful, a bit easier to put together, and capable of huge amounts of damage and crowd control. This is the build that I tell agents to assemble when they are new to the division and trying to get more powerful. This is also the build that I mentioned to hardcore veteran players looking to change it up a bit from their current setups. And with that, let's get started. Here is my current status build setup, and I'm going to give you some options if you don't have the few exotics shown on screen. And even with these non-exotic options, this build will slap just as hard. So let's start off with the specialization itself, and important that for this variant of the build, built on flame status effects, that you opt for the firewall specialization. This is really the only specialization in the game that I will still actively use the specialized weapon, almost like a primary. Now the passive talent firewall ammo acquisition will award us flamethrower fuel drops for killing targets within 10 meters. More damage for the flamethrower is obtained through the passive signature weapon damage node, plus 20% burn duration is gained through the enriched magnesium formula passive talent, and then make sure to select the correct weapon damage nodes to match your build. If like me, you are comboing an assault rifle and a shotgun, make sure to pick both of those plus 15% weapon damage nodes. I'll show you the build in action and using the flamethrower like a primary and just how effective it can be a little later in this video. For the gear, I highly recommend a backpack with the Creeping Death talent. My Wyvern brand set piece grants plus 10% skill damage, and the attributes are not actually ideal as you really want skill damage and status effects, and then I've added on a skill haste mod. Creeping Death is ideal for a status effect build as it amplifies the spread of your status to any additional enemies within 8 meters of your target. So, we hit the first target with, say, a flame status, and then it should spread like wildfire to all surrounding targets. By the way, the new Habsburg-named Courier backpack features perfectly creeping death for 10 meters of range, if you can make it work with those attributes. The bulk of this build is centered around four pieces of Eclipse Protocol, and by the way, if you don't have it, either set Countdown or the Summit to targeted loot of Eclipse Protocol and farm for it which should honestly not take you very long. One of the reasons this build is so easy to assemble. Two pieces of Eclipse nets the build plus 15% status effects, three pieces plus 15% skill haste and plus 30% hazard protection, and the four piece will unlock indirect transmission. Now this talent works much like Creeping Death, but it spreads the status effects on kill within 10 meters and refreshes 50% of the initial status effects duration timer. Now, since we are using the chess piece, we also unlock the proliferation talent, which boosts indirect transmission from 10 to 15 meters and the duration timer reset from 50 to 75%. Between creeping death and indirect transmission, we will be spreading our flame status effects to nearby enemies and to new targets once a target dies from a status effect. I've also chosen skill haste as the attribute and a skill haste mod as well. By the way, there is some play with the options here. I go back and forth between haste and status effects, kind of depending on how the build is connecting during that play session. The gloves are piece number two of Eclipse Protocol, and again, I've opted for skill haste here. Now, I tend to use the fire sticky a lot, and it has a naturally high cooldown timer, so this extra haste kind of helps reduce that downtime. The knee pads are piece number three of Eclipse, again, like the gloves, with skill haste. And the holster rounds out the four pieces of Eclipse Protocol with status effects as the attribute. 
The mask I have opted for is the Exotic Vile BTSU mask, which comes standard with a skill tier core attribute and status effects plus hazard protection as the attributes. I've added on an additional skill haste mod to kind of round it all out. Now the vial features toxic delivery as the additional talent whereby status effects also apply a damage over time debuff of 10 seconds. This damage is equal to 50% of your concussion grenades damage and is increased by adding more status effect stats to your build. So now when we apply a status effect, which is what this build is built for, it will also apply a damage over time tick that lasts for 10 seconds. Now between all of our status effect stats, creeping death, indirect transmission, and now toxic delivery, this build really serves it up for not only damage output, but crowd control. Weapons are up to you, but I personally think the Scorpio shotgun is tailor-made for this setup, as it is superb at locking down enemies that are pushing you, plus all of the septic shock weapon talents it features are status effects, which benefit from your build stats. That 7 stack bonus of 20% additional damage from all sources, including your allies, is a great talent bonus. Okay, so maybe shotguns are not your thing, and in that case, I would also recommend an assault rifle like the Capacitor for building up skill damage stacks. For my build, I actually prefer to use this G36 with max stats and the NSYNC weapon talent. It's a stable assault rifle, and hitting targets with the NSYNC talent instantly grants additional skill damage. Again, there's a lot of flex to this build for weaponry, so choose what you're comfortable with. For skills, the Burn Sticky Bomb is what we use at range to wipe out huge mobs of enemies. Not only with the initial impact and damage inflicted by that Sticky Bomb strike, but also through those spreading fire status effects to the surrounding targets. For certain spawn closets, don't sleep on the incinerator fire turret. If you get it placed down in time, it will consistently hit enemies with fire status effects which will then spread and kill more and more targets as they start to run out the door. As promised, here's some options for you in this build. Number one, if you're going to be taking on the Black Tusk, their tech is immune to status effects. Not the soldiers, their tech, which is why I would switch out the incinerator turret for the jammer pulse. Not only will it disable and in some cases outright destroy their tech, it will also inflict damage on that tech through the Vile Mask Toxic Delivery Talent. Also, and here's option number two, if you don't yet have the exotic Vile Mask, you can always swap in another brand set piece, like a second piece of Wyvern for the additional status effect percentages. But ideally, you really want that mask for the talent it brings. Now, it's one thing to talk about the build, but it's another thing to show it in action. And I used the Chunks League Jefferson Trade Center time mission to show you just how much chaos this build can bring down on your targets. Now, the target time for this one was under 12 minutes, which should not pose you a problem, but I had this idea in the back of my mind that we could get it below 5 minutes. Here's that mission with my live commentary, and I'll be back afterwards with some final thoughts for you. If we can avoid any of the heavies that come out, because those are just, they gobble up time, this should be a pretty quick run if I can hit all my marks. Pay attention here, I'll show you where to use the incinerator turret. So we're going to blast down range with the sticky. That should hit them with the status effects, creeping death, and with the Scorpio, and here's the turret on this door right here. Watch this thing. Hopefully there's no heavy in there, we're going to push down. And we should be waiting on this door if there's no heavy. That flame turret will finish everything off back there. See, they're dying right there. There we go. Perfect. 256 on the door. Pull the turret down. That's where that turret really pays off is that one door. So you can make your way all the way down to the next door and be there when it opens. All right, we're going to hit these guys with this. Go. Stop shooting at me. Good. Flame status took. Oh, one ran all the way over here already. Come on, man. Don't run over here. Wasting time here. Hopefully that status effect will catch. Should be some up here. Door. There we go. That'll finish all of them off. Perfect. All right, besides that one that kind of ran over there next to the uh, cafeteria bar, that wasted maybe a second or two. 
I'm gonna hit these dudes over on the left with the sticky. They kind of run out. There's a slow one. Creeping death will hit them all. Alright, there's a flame stay to see it. It didn't take. Mm, sometimes this game. Like, they can be right in the nozzle. It took that one a couple bursts, too. That should finish them off, hopefully. Turn around. Oh, okay, got him. Alright, hitting the door at 414. I probably left a good two, three, maybe four seconds out there. With status effects not catching via the flamethrower, but we're still on a... This feels like a sub-5 run. Let me hit this guy. Perfect. Creeping death. Indirect transmission. Toxic delivery. It'll finish them all off. Let me give him a burst. There we go. Let me use the flamethrower up here if they don't kill me first. There we go. That'll pass over. Yep. Caught there. This should pass off. Oh, I got blinded. Crap. Burning, that's good. And down. Oh, that was a really good time. Show me the time. I got to wait for them to go through this little speech at the end here. Look, there is nothing you could have done for Espinoza. That fucking hyena was toying with us. All right, here we go. Interact. Show me the time. Top left. 451. 451. Nice. I'm happy with that. I'm done. I broke five minutes. I'm out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will, of course, do my best to respond. Probably the most common thought would be, hey, does this build still work on heroic difficulty? And the answer to that is an emphatic yes. But targets on heroic difficulty are more resilient, so they take a bit longer to die from the status effects, and your agent will, of course, take more incoming damage so make sure to take advantage of cover. If you happen to like the video, please remember to smash that big, beautiful subscribe button and ring the bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Also, don't forget to set your YouTube notifications to receive all, and if you could rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over in my open community Discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. A huge shout out to the over 114,000 of you out there that have taken the leap and hit that subscribe button. And as always, a massive thank you to the Buzz Battalion patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.